Hey there, and welcome to a video talking about Heterlums, most notable games of 2018. This year we'll do things a little differently. There will be a few categories which the games have been split between. This year I didn't play a lot of brand new games, because I was trying to catch up on older experiences that I never got around to doing. Hopefully I can remedy that in 2019. Even in 2018, I missed a lot of games that might very well be in this list, had I played them. But let's get stra right into this, shall we? First category is all about the fun factor. Here belongs a game that I had the most raw fun with this year. The game that fits the most here is Dead Cells. A game that describes itself as a roguevania. It includes elements from rogue roguelite and metroidvania type games. It's an excellent side-scrolling action game, with satisfying fast combat animations. There is also the usual roguelite permanent progression, but with a little spin. You need to reach the upgrade place to be able to upgrade stuff. If you die before, then you lose it all. Dead Cells comes with a lot of variety in equipment you can find during your playthroughs. And every playthrough has a different map layout, because maps are procedurally generated. All in all, this game was so much fun this year, that whenever I started playing, it was hard to stop. Dead Cells also has modding support, so keep that in mind. It will keep you playing for much longer than you might expect. Another game that would easily fit into this category would be The Void Reigns Upon Her Heart, if it was out of early access. Void Reigns is a boss rush bullet hell game with a lot of gameplay variety. You have dozens of bosses to fight, with different patterns and needed strategies. There are also a lot of gifts to find that can change you how you play. Gifts are kind of like upgrades and include both passive stat bonuses and actual game-changing cards. It has a nice and simple art style and comes with great music. Which leads us, leads us to the next category. The second category is for games that had an amazing soundtrack.
the game that fits this category the best is Grease. A side-scrolling puzzle platformer with gorgeous visuals and a limited color palette that somehow still makes the world look rich in color. Not only is the game itself visually stunning, but it also comes with an amazing ambient soundtrack that you can just keep listening to over and over again if you like ambient music. As far as the puzzles go, the game isn't super challenging, but I don't think it tries to be either. I have also added it to my list of best games of all time. It's the tenth game to have made it into that list. It was delayed, but there will be a looking back at video for Chris soon. A second game that would fit this category would be Clicker Heroes 2. The game itself is in early access, but because the music isn't, I thought that it could still qualify for this award. Clicker Heroes 2 is an incremental action RPG similar to something like Diablo-style games. It has a heavy focus on skills more than anything. The key to progression isn't grinding out artificial currency that gives you a bonus to damage or something. Instead, you have to keep fixing and making your build better and better to be able to uh, get further faster. I personally am using a build that I creatively call Cursed Multiclick with Haste. The reason I use Multiclick and Haste is because I absolutely love fast attacks. My attacks don't do a lot of damage, but they go by so quickly that in the end they might as well do a lot per second. And the first 125 worlds have gone by at a fair pace with no need to rerun any of the worlds. Next category is for the MMO of the year. I think that this one belongs to Maple Story 2 which coincidentally released in 2018 for most of the world. A fun isometric action RPG that comes with a fair amount of content for you to do. And it's one of those MMOs where playing multiple characters is worth it for people who like doing that, like me. The game includes plenty to do for both casual and more hardcore players. For example, if you're good enough, you can solo dungeons, and possibly even raids. I haven't tried the latter, so I'm not 100% sure. There is a prestige system that is account-wide leveling, benefiting all characters. Although it's fairly limited in what it can do. Maple Story 2 itself is bright and colorful like its predecessor, but this time it was made in 3D. You might know my thoughts on the first Maple Story by now. I consider it to be one of the most valuable MMOs around, thanks to the sheer amount of stories it tells, and the content, content it includes. Hopefully the sequel goes that way as well, but it doesn't have the same developer, so we will have to hope and see. Moving on with the category for Open World Game of the Year. I will give this one, this one to Subnautica for its excellent environment. Subnautica is a survival game based around the idea of exploring an ocean. It's deep and uh, creepy. Environment is genuinely beautiful, but at the same time quite scary at times. I have always been fascinated by the ocean or underwater world in general. Subnautica depicts it in an interactive way. Sure, you have the usual survival elements, but I would say that they are made well in this game and don't, don't get in the way of your experience most of the time. The game is pretty much immersion brought to a whole new level. You can even build your own home underwater with lots of different buildings and connections that allow for a surprising amount of customization. Next award will be the Racing Game of the Year 
first game in this list is obviously Wreckfest. An excellent racer, car handling feels great, physics I find to be spot on. The way the cars break seems to be modeled well, and there are plenty of events for you to go through. You can even upgrade your vehicles, which seems to be a fairly rare feature nowadays in the racing genre. Breakfast also includes modding support, which allows you to customize your racing experience in one way or, an or another for increased playtime. The second game that I think deserves this award is Grip Combat Racing, a unique racing game trying out the, a type of vehicles that can drive on both sides. They don't have a roof or bottom, they can just adapt as needed. I used to have an RC car like that in the past, and it was fun to play with it on more extreme terrains, because it would just bounce all over the place and never get stuck regardless of what happens. Anyway, Grip includes a tournament creator which allows you to put together tournaments of your own. A feature that I absolutely love in any game that has something like it. But unfortunately, it's uh, nowhere near the norm, so almost every game lacks the ability for you to create your own competitions like that. The handling of some of the vehicles feels a little off, but otherwise the game is very very fun, with its selection of power-ups that you can use to destroy your competition. It even includes car core, which uh, forces you to learn to control your car in the most efficient way possible. All round an amazing game, oh and it even has split screen multiplayer, so get your friends and play with up to 4 players on the same computer you'll have a guaranteed good time. Another category I would like to add is Multiplayer Game of the Year. This one belongs to Warframe, a third-person action game with space ninjas that still keeps its fun going. It has an active development cycle and I hope to start progressing better in 2019. I would love to unlock and keep all frames in the game, but that will require a ton of platinum to pull off. I also wish to get, get most weapons in the game and keep them in my inventory to use with the randomizer. Can't recommend the game enough for people who like grind based games. Especially because each of the levels you go into is semi-procedurally generated. They have a tile based uh, generation where the tiles are preset but the way they are placed on the map and how the map is put together uh, from them that is random and that makes even the same even doing the same mission over and over again significantly more interesting at least to me. Next I would like to bring up mobile games. The award for best mobile games goes to the following games. First in line is Dragon Blaze, which is a fun grind based RPG that focuses on long term progression, but allows you to make it grind on its own even without having the game open as of season 6. The game includes a fair amount of different game modes despite the fact that they removed half of them in the season 6 update. Removed game modes return every now and then in the form of events that give us freebies. This way they feel fresh, because we aren't doing them every single day. 
The story of Dragon Blaze is also something you should pay attention to if you're a fan of RPG storylines. It has one of the more in interesting stories within the mobile online game landscape as far as I'm concerned. Just as a warning, I would like to mention that the game has gone overboard with pop-ups again, as of Season 6. I'll still give it this award for now, but if the pop-ups aren't reduced within 2019, I'll be forced to take the game off, to off of the list. Because it comes off as really, really annoying. Annoying enough to potentially ruin the experience. Second mobile game of the year is Seven Nights. Seven Nights is a gacha game, but unlike most games of this type, here most heroes are actually viable options for groups. The newest additions aren't guaranteed to dominate anything. For the longest time I stayed in Master League in Arena, with a group of heroes who according to the server rights statistics were used by 0-1% to of the entire player base. All that really matters is that the groups you build actually synergize well with each other. Oh, and the developers are pretty generous with the rewards. Every day you get quite a lot of stuff and daily activities don't take all that long. It takes you on average about 40 minutes to finish everything mandatory. Seven Nights is not grind based so in my experience grinding has been optional. And I have done just fine without it. I currently have 107 6 star characters and almost 40 of them are level 50. Which is the maximum level. I have enough duplicates to have more than more level 50s but eh. Uh, I'll do it sometime. Gameplay in Seven Nights is simple. It's a turn based game where turns don't wait for you. Characters keep auto-attacking each other one by one, but you can change the flow a little by using abilities. Or letting the game use abilities for you. Until 2018 the game had an update every single week. As of 2019, it will have an update every two weeks instead. Third mobile game of the year is King's Raid. A mobile online RPG where you can get heroes for free from the inn by talking to them every day until a bar fails, or by buying the heroes you want with premium currency. Don't worry, you earn plenty of premium currency by playing the game itself. I have probably spent over 100,000 rupees at the very least, and still have plenty left over. Game itself has a lengthy and interesting story. Event stories are also great. We actually get to learn about the characters within events, which is something most games would never do. Each event has real effort put into it as far as I can tell. Just check out the event coverage somewhere on, somewhere on my channel and you'll see it yourself. Next category is for incremental games, which were in my opinion the most interesting of the fully released incremental games in 2018. Well. Dragon Cliff comes to mind. It's a simple grind based idle game that does include manual play. The game focuses more on equipment than most other games in the genre. You can't over level or in some other way overpower monsters because your characters have a level cap. And other stuff also has caps while equipment and gems do not. However, the way equipment and gems scale as loot they will never be all that powerful either, so you should never run out of challenging content. In a way I wish there was more to upgrade here other than equipment, but I do have that weakness against upgradable gems, so there's that. Second incremental game of the year is God Awful Clicker. Unlike the name, this game is great. It has an active development cycle and comes with fast progress, while not becoming a one-shot mania like most similar games do. Godawful Clicker does not have a rebirth mechanic, so you will never really one-shot monsters for 75% of your runs, just to get a little further than last time. Instead, you grind for a few minutes at a path you got stuck at and then get to go further by a little. Sometimes there are critical points where you race further for like 50 paths or so at once. 
Unfortunately, there is one downside to this game. It has that one trap that I feel almost all incremental RPGs have, where the numbers lose all meaning pretty quickly after you start playing, so it's tough to keep the feeling of progression. The way I managed to keep it for myself was to just take the skill points I get every 5 gladiator levels, and also the divine blessing levels help because they are in readable numbers, and whenever I feel, whenever I level them up, I feel like I get stronger. They help get your gladiator further by a little bit. The final category is reserved for promising early access, alpha or beta games. This category includes a few that I already mentioned earlier. First game in this list is Wide Rains Upon Her Heart, which despite being in early access is one of my highlights of 2018. It's an unfinished game, that is more fun than a lot of finished titles. Second promising early access game is Clicker Heroes 2. Already an excellent game in its own right, it's still very basic, and we know of several upcoming features that will make the game significantly better, and also worthwhile for people who want permanent progression features. The first permanent progression feature will be Ethereal items that seem to be basically customization options, options, giving you some kind of bonuses. Also don't forget modding support. Flickerhairs 2 has full modding support, where you can do a lot with it. I myself made a visual mod where I created new worlds, using existing tilesets just to mix up the visual side of things a bit. But you can go further and create your own characters with their own skills and skill tree, or brand new features if you want. I have an idea for that regarding gilding, but I need to first see what the terrell items are, because they might be exactly what I have in mind for my mod. I don't want to copy, so if they do happen to be similar, I'll instead try to build around them. We'll see what happens. By the way, I have or I have played the game for 1000 hours according to Steam. Third promising early access game is Robotorium. This is a game that seems to have inspirations from several different titles. It has turn-based tactical combat similar to JRPGs and the mission selection screen just like XCOM. Game itself looks quite nice and with added modding support the game will have near infinite replayability for me. Just like the studio's previous game Dungeon Rushers. I just have to free and more time to play both of these games. They're great and I recommend at least keeping an eye on them. Another game in Steam Early Access that I have enjoyed a lot is Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. It's a Dungeons and Dragons licensed incremental game that is actually good. I have had a lot of fun with it. It's also extremely well optimized, where it works at full power, even when I'm rendering videos. Most games tend to lag a little bit. Idle Champions is also updated regularly with new content and events. If you like RPG-like incremental games, this will be one that will keep you playing for a long time. Also, try out the company's other game called Crusaders of the Lost Idols, which is just as good but includes different design decisions. Next promising early access game is called Time Warpers. It's an incremental first person shooter that is for some reason ridiculously fun for me. I don't know what it is about this game. Maybe it's the fast paced nature of it that makes it so fun. Maybe it's the tangible feeling of progression. Maybe it's both. The game is excellent so far, and following the development and updates it has gotten, it seems to just get better over time. I'm not very far yet, but I'll get there. I prefer playing it solo, so I'm probably progressing slower than a lot of other people. The final promising game is in closed alpha right now. It's a game called Idle Space Raider, and is developed by the same person who made Transport Defender. I have enjoyed playing this one a lot so far. It's a pure idle game, where the idea is that you have objectives you have to fulfill, 
and everything works automatically. The game moves from objective to objective on its own, and each objective is a little different with its own modifiers like more health, or less damage taken and such. At first you have to level your rep weapons and such manually, but over time you can switch over to full automation, and still enjoy the game to the fullest, at least I have been able to. There are a lot of games that seemed promising, but I never got around to playing, or at least didn't manage to play enough to form an opinion. The following list is these games in the form of honorable mentions. Nino Kuni 2 and God of War, which are more open world type games with a more interesting story. Monster Hunter World. Into the Bridge, which is a puzzle game by the people who made FTL Fast and Light. Red Dead Redemption 2, a highly detailed open world game set in the American West by Rockstar. Octopath Traveler which looks like a fun turn-based JRPG. Unravel 2, a small indie puzzle platformer built around co-op and looks gorgeous. Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is a medieval RPG trying to be more realistic. Ghost of a Tale, a game about the cute mouse. Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. An isometric CRPG with tons of story and lore. Tangle Deep. Conceptually my favorite idea for a roguelike game. It's a roguelike masked as an RPG. Or the other way around. And therefore would definitely give me hundreds of hours of what, Hundreds of hours of fun. But unfortunately I didn't play it enough to form an opinion. So here it is. The Missing, J.J. McField and The Island of Memories, a somewhat horrific puzzle game. Mother Gunship, a sequel to Tower of Guns that includes gun customization with near infinite possibilities and the little I played felt great. It was a lot of fun. Nairi, The Tower of Sherin and Chok, which are point and click adventure games that look bright and colorful and good. Finally, Book of Demons, a simple dungeon crawler of sorts that seems like it would be a lot of fun. The little I played actually was interesting. Honorable mentions for mobile games include Epic 7 on Miyushi, Knights Chronicle and Dora Kingdom Mobile. I haven't played any of these enough to form an opinion just yet, but they seem interesting. Epic 7 specifically looks to have a high production value so it might turn into a very limiting game for the free-to-play player. On Miyushi I've played a fair amount, but I kind of got stuck fairly early in the game. I'll get on with my progress as soon as possible. The game feels a bit limiting right now. Story is great though. Also, a special honorable mention to Fortnite. I just got to mention it. It's a battle royale game that is for some strange reason immensely fun. Please keep team modes in the game, especially team rumble, disco domination and food fight. Those are really really enjoyable to play for me. So much so that over 95% of my playtime is spent in them. Fortnite wasn't nominated in any of the awards simply because I didn't play it in 2018. But once I played a lot within 2019, I think it might have what it takes to be in my next test. Certainly seems that way so far. I think this concludes my this year's list. There were a lot of games I didn't get around to playing. There were a fair amount of games I did play and even managed to get a new entry into my all-time favorites list. Which I will show you on the screen right about now. These are the 10 games that I consider to be the best I have ever experienced to date.
I would say while 2018 felt really long, it was a great year as far as indie games are concerned and it even included a number of good AAA games. In 2019 I hope to play more newer games as well as catch up on older titles. There are a lot of great games I have missed over the years, when just barely managing to keep up with the channel schedule I have created for myself. What were your top games of 2018? There are so many games that I probably even forgot a few entirely, so just let me know if, you, if I did. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.